So for me, this was quite a tough question, actually. What, what do we do practically the same way every single time you get to a new brief? Obviously, that's a very difficult question when, you know, we work on things as wide as H&M to HMRC. And, you know, selling more sweaters at Christmas time is a very, very different uh, or requires a very different approach to getting people to file their tax return on time. Uh, and, I, and obviously, I think, you know, the best planners are those who are a bit, of, a bit chameleon, you know, can be one part data analyst when they need to be or behavioural scientist or more creative strategist when they need to be. But I think if I, when I really thought about it, there is one characteristic um, that I think makes for the best planners and actually all of us should really have at our heart and I would consider it our superpower and that's empathy. So this is Mantis, if you don't know, from Guardians of the Galaxy. When she, when she touches uh, people, she feels what they feel. And I think that's, that's the strength and the role increasingly of us as planners. And so I've developed, I've kind of coined a phrase uh, called method planning, which is the idea that I try and approach every single brief consistently with by putting myself not just in the shoes of the consumer, but really becoming the consumer myself sharing the emotional experience that they experience in and around my brand. Similar to, um, what's his name? Christian Bale in The Machinist. Um, so he, he did this so much so that he lost that much weight. And then again in American Hustle that he put on weight. And I just need to reinforce here that this isn't really about um, eating a load of pizza if you're working on a pizza brand and, it, you know, just using the product. Although, as a side note, I did do that when I worked on Pizza Hut in the US. This is really about embracing the similarly to method acting, um, the, the complete emotional experience of the consumer and, and emotionally identifying with them, falling in love with them and almost becoming them yourself. Um, so I've got two examples here of how I've successfully done that recently. And the first one is on a brand uh, we work with called Highways England. Um, and to be honest, actually, this did start with a data um, <laughs> approach where uh, I sat down with my equally creative data analyst um, and, and we approached this with a strategic review of all of the um, reasons or we call them um, causal uh, inputs to why accidents occur or KSIs, killed in serious injuries, why they occur. Um, and, and we found out that actually one of the primary um, contributing factors to KSIs is what we call close following um, or tailgating. It is involved in so many KSIs, in fact, that it's actually a greater um, problem than speeding on the Highways England's roads. Um, so that's quite a surprising fact, and we could have stopped there and done an awareness campaign around uh, just how many people get into accidents as a result of close following. Um, but we went a bit further uh, and spoke to people about it and they actually told us that, yeah, you know, they're quite happy to admit it. They say, oh, yeah, of course I close follow. I you know, need to get up behind those people and let them know they're not going fast enough or get around them. In fact, they're actually quite proud of close following and tailgating behaviour. So at that point, and there was a bit of behavioural science involved in this bit, where we decided we actually needed a campaign that changed perceptions around tailgating from being something um, socially acceptable, similarly to drink driving, which was once um, socially acceptable, to, to being socially unacceptable, by creating some sort of label or character or something that would you know, become part of the vernacular um, to, to discourage the behaviour and make it socially negative. So I started, of course, by doing, you know, the factory visit, going out to uh, the Cube somewhere in central England um, and spending a day watching uh, traffic on the roads together with um, the people who are often the first responders to, to accidents on the roads and, and just watching how prevalent and frequent people close follow to one another and how dangerous it really is. So it was interesting, um, but still it wasn't quite enough. Again, this would have resulted in a brief of just how frequent it is and how dangerous it can be. So I, I felt like I actually needed to enact this method planning style and somehow find a way to get out on the road and experience what it's like to be close followed myself. Now the issue is I live in central London. I haven't driven for about five years. <laughs> 
So it would be frankly dangerous for me um, to get out on the roads. So after some negotiation with our, our clients, um, I donned some high-vis vests. Uh, we took my data strategist and spent a day on the road um, with the Highways England um, traffic control officers. That's Carl and Carl. They were great fun. Uh, <laughs> um, we did rolling road stops. It was very dramatic. Uh, but most importantly, I spent a lot of time just looking out the back window of this, of this car and watching people coming so close to our car, just nonchalantly looking at us. And what was really quite transformative for me was the emotional experience that I felt where this car was encroaching so close to, to our car and I realised that felt like my personal space actually. The, the area behind your car belongs to you, not to the car behind you. It felt like they were really confronting me and creeping up on me just as you would feel like if somebody was standing next to you. And that was quite a different emotional experience to the one sitting behind a screen just watching close following happening in the cube. So the brief became, don't be a creep. So how do we negatively label close followers or tailgaters as creeps, essentially, just as you would someone in real life? And uh, I can, the creative work as a result, I can show you a film to, ha to show how we brought that to life. If you tailgate the car in front, the closer you get, the less time you'll have to react. Don't be a space invader. Stay safe. Stay back. So obviously, creatively, we decided that using a cultural icon like space invaders rather than creeps was, was going to be more effective. Um, I actually much prefer this media channel, uh, which uh, is really effective and I really like. This is on a couple of hundred or thousand maybe buses around the country and, and a few thousand cars as well have given out these um, bumper stickers. So that was example one and it's really about the transformation that, that really experiencing firsthand method planning, um, getting in that car and experiencing firsthand gave me that insight and, and really helped push the creative <coughs> forward to be less generic. <coughs> Second example, I also work on a brand called Dreamies, which is the world's most irresistible cat treat. So when I started working on this brand, I didn't have a cat. <laughs> now I do. <laughs> Her name is Bertie, she's great. And now I'm the office cat lady. Uh, so obviously the first thing I did uh, once Bodie came to be uh, was buy her some dreamies and confirmed that dreamies are indeed the world's most irresistible cat treat and they are absolutely cat crack. She is obsessed with them. Um, but again, that wasn't quite enough. You know, just seeing her react so positively and just really enjoy these things, irresistibility is sort of like a car category norm for us. It wasn't enough. So I spent a lot of time with her. Lucky thing, she got a lot of treats as a result of this. Um, just watching her behaviour and her learned behaviour around these treats and I've got some videos to show you, but unfortunately, despite being in this very high-tech facility, we can't get the sound to work. Um, but you'll hear some, sh pretend to hear some shake sounds. And this is what happens now that she's learned. Shake, shake, shake. <laughs> so as soon as she hears the, sa the shake sound, she's actually developed a Pavlovian response. I call her Pavlov's cat now. Every time she, she hears that shake sound, she actually comes running to me. And I've tested whether that, that um, shake has extended or been generalized to other things, and it, it actually has. So she'll come running for M&Ms and also these dentist sticks things. <laughs> Pretty much anything, the poor thing. Um, but really, what was the emotional moment or, or the moment that was quite more insightful for me was the fact that actually, yes, it was incredibly irresistible for her. This thing is generalized. The shake is powerful. But it's what the shake meant for me. Cats are contrary creatures, they're actually assholes most of the time and they'll only give you love and affection on their own terms. The shake gave me a tool, gave me power to bring her to me for a shared moment of connection, for a moment of love where I could pretend for a minute that she actually quite likes me. Um, interestingly, the creative team also found this video, you'll have to imagine the shake again in this because the, the sound on this one's not working either, um, but just to prove that it's not just me and my crazy cat. 
Uh, this is somewhere in the US. A woman has tested this out. <laughs> That's quite common. Uh, <laughs> so as a result, uh, we've gotten to this brand platform, which is all it takes is a shake. And the brackets there should be to bring your cat to you for a share shared moment of love. Um, so this is a creative work, one of them. Mummy says we're not allowed a cat. Cats go meow. That's why. And where are yours? Your cat goes meow. Temptations, cat treats. <laughs> There's quite a few executions there. It's all about sonic branding and trying to really get that as our DMS. So I guess part of that was getting to an insight, but part of that was also just helping me as a planner with belief and conviction in, in this insight. The fact that I have a cat and I could literally film her doing this and then not only help use that to sell it through to clients, but also to sell it through within my agency, to creative teams, to push ideas further. When you really believe in a product or brand and you genuinely experience firsthand the power um, of it in, in your consumer or yourselves in that occasion in your life, um, it, it's quite transformative and, and gives you that belief and conviction that, require, that you require to get to better creative work. So Bill Burnback famously said, the consumer is your wife. It's sort of true, but I think it's no longer enough to just assume that. I think as planners now, we must think of the consumers as ourselves. Um, desk research, as we all know, is not doing us any favours. We need to get out there. Um, you know, it, it only results in generic insights. And we need to insist on those field days. Every planner in our department is allowed at least one field day a year on every brand they work on to try and get out there and immerse themselves fully in the emotional experience of their consumers, to try and uncover interesting and different um, insights uh, that they wouldn't otherwise have found. So go a bit gonzo, and that's where I'll leave you. <laughs>